Hello, everybody out there in Hello. virtual Hello. space. They're close. Hello. Good evening. What's happening there in Berlin? A lot of protests. Huh? Protest? I, 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 protests I, I, in Berlin. Yeah. They, they, they think Corona is nonsense. Yeah. What about Hamburg? Not this. Not so many people in Hamburg worried. No. Hello, Bonte. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Hallo Bante, hier ist Arvid, grüße dich. Ja. Yeah. Nice to meet you again. Yes. <laughs> I didn't see you last couple of times. Yeah. You, you look very uh, powerful today. Yeah. Like every time you look so, but this time you look powerful. I, I find it. <laughs> That's, I think it's great. <laughs> You gotta, you, you have to, uh, you have to balance your inner power and outer power. Yeah, <laughs> this is right. Well, I've been, I've been a, a little uh, working on renovating uh, one horse stable here. So I'm out a few hours a day doing some manual work like I used to do. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, putting on a roof and uh, things like that and uh, uh, getting, uh, you know, a little tired, but coming in to meditate and not saying, oh, I, I worked, I worked a, a lot. Let me lay down and skip meditation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Deliberately, yeah, yeah. I, I work to get tired and then come in, rest 15 minutes and sit to meditate. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. You, are, you are very strong with your power. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice, nice to hear it. <laughs> Hi, Bandi. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Ganapola, your son, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like father, like son, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, you recognize. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Frau Havish. Ah, good morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Frau <laughs> Havish. <laughs> Good afternoon, Bante. Good afternoon, Orapin. How are you? Uh, I'm here and now. <laughs> if you're here and good now afternoon. with whatever's arising, if it's if it's not good, it's still good. And if it's good, don't cling to it. That too. Because it's only a, a concept in your mind. How the mind is judging whether you feel good or bad or uh, what, if it's too hot or if it's too cold or the government is good or no good. Uh, it is <coughs> what it is, right? And uh, so our mind can either make a deal out of it and suffer or it can just maintain equanimity and just abide in the peaceful vibration of the present moment. That's meditation. Keeping the mind in the middle, you know. That's it. That's all there is. It's on fire this time you're here. So that's our Dharma talk for today. <laughs> <laughs> we can meditate now. I can leave. No, you got to meditate.
So today our friend uh, Prashant, he, he, he may not be joining us as the host, so I have to remember how to do these things. Uh, his, his mother having a bad time, so uh, at the end of meditation we're going to send Manda Sen Metta to Prashant's mom, uh, who's not doing well. Bante. Yes. Bante, are you free to share with us uh, about her prognosis? Uh, later, not right, not right now. Okay. okay. At the end, at the end, if you. Okay. At the end. But basically, it's a terminal prognosis. Oh my God! Yeah, I I suspected something like that. Yeah. Maybe, you know, six months or a year, who knows? These things are unpredictable. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pancreatic cancer. Oh my God. Advan advanced stages. Gabriel is off there. Okay, friends, uh, let's go ahead and uh, you can uh, mute. Mute yourselves, please, and then we will uh, recite, for those who like, recite Namo Tassa and the three uh, refuges. Bhante, if I may, uh, you are you going to press the record button? I think it's recording. Yeah, it, it's recording. I didn't turn it off this time, but thanks for reminding me. Okay. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma buddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Buddhang Saranangachami Dhammang Saranangachami Sangang Saranangachami Dutiyampi Buddhang Saranangachami Duti ampi dhammang saranangachami. Duti ampi sangang saranangachami. Tati ampi buddhang saranangachami. Tati ampi dhammang saranangachami. Tati ampi sangang saranangachami. So, welcome, Dhamma friends. Uh, so, today, as I mentioned before, I'm you know, going to uh, begin cutting down the lengths of the Dhamma talks and want to encourage more uh, uh, Dhamma questions. Uh, on meditation or any aspects of the Dhamma, and uh, then perhaps having a, a, a longer uh, uh, yoga session and a, and a longer uh, uh, meditation. Because even though we've talked, I've you know, covered so many different aspects of uh, the practice of meditation and, and, and so on, uh, it's really <laughs> It's really actually the, the practice of the meditation that's going to make uh, you know, the big difference. Uh, and, and the more that you uh, practice the meditation and, and the longer that you stay in meditation too. A lot of people just want to meditate 30 minutes. I ain't going to cut it. You, know? you won't read Sotapanna for 30 minutes. Uh, well, okay, so, so to speak. But... Uh, so, you know, pushing the envelope of your practice, pushing the edge of your pain, pushing the edge of your restlessness and learning how to 
apply the antidotes and to, you know, stick it out, even if you think you're not getting, uh, if you can't concentrate the fact of just sitting still and enduring pain longer and longer, that has some uh, positive beneficial uh, effect, uh, you know, in the nervous system and conditioning the body so that it can sit uh, longer and longer because that's, that's how the transformation, uh, you know, uh, increases. So uh, I'd like to encourage any of you to, uh, you know, via the chat line to, uh, you know, write some Dhamma question or I'll, uh, I'll speak a little bit about uh, one uh, topic. Uh, but uh, or I'll go ahead and speak a little bit and then you can write some uh, question uh, down. So anyway, I just want to review, uh, you know, the meditation practice because uh, we need to keep reinforcing that into our uh, consciousness uh, as much as uh, possible, because that's the way that it gets deeper ingrained in our unconscious and we can more easily remember it. So, you know, there's so many aspects to meditation, but basically it's balancing concentration and mindfulness. So, you know, the progress of meditation is mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom, usually in that order. But normally we start learning how to practice concentration and, and mindfulness basically at the same time. Because even to concentrate, you have to be mindful. You have to be mindful of the hindrances. Because if you're not mindful of the hindrances, you can spend the whole 30 minutes or one hour just lost in your thoughts or just sort of, you know, again, just uh, uh, nodding out, uh, restless mind, and uh, or get caught up in daydreams or get caught up in what we call a false, kind of a false meditation. It's like, you know, you're, you're meditating, but the mind isn't really, uh, you know, going anywhere. So one has to, uh, you know, double down and focus on, on both the, the concentration, uh, such as mindfulness of breathing, and the posture. I can't uh, repeat that uh, enough, that really, you know, meditation happens within this uh, body and mind, the nervous system, between the brain and the spinal column. That's where meditation takes place. As the whole world comes to us through the, the senses, nervous system, and the mind, the consciousness. And so if we're not sitting straight and alert, uh, then, you know, you're going to be beating your head against the wall from here to the day you die and, uh, you know, not making very deep uh, in progress. So mindfulness of the posture is important. Uh, and to do that, some kind of exercise is also important to keep your uh, limbs limber and, uh, you know, the good circulation and learning how to do deeper uh, breathing. Although it's not very much talked about in the Buddhist practice, but uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's one thing that I found to be, uh, you know, really, really beneficial uh, that I got from the yoga practice is learning how to do deep uh, uh, breathing as a form of um, breathing awareness and an excellent way to gain uh, concentration. So, uh, so that's why I'm going to include a few more uh, yoga exercises at the, before we start uh, meditating, if I can find room here <laughs> uh, to do it. And, uh, <clears throat> but uh, I wanted to, to mention, uh, you know, so, Gaining that centeredness in the body, the present moment centeredness, using mindfulness of breathing and the mindfulness of posture, and the sensations of the sitting posture, uh, in order to hold the attention in the present moment, uh, holding it in the middle, 
again, as I mentioned uh, before, we so I was talking to somebody at the beginning, you know, about that meditation is about keeping the mind in the middle. Uh, and the middle means being grounded and centered in the present moment, not going out this way, not going out uh, that way, not uh, getting too lost deep into the body and not getting too lost deep in the mind. So finding that middle uh, balance between inside and outside, between being too quiet and too active. Uh, and it's something you will definitely notice uh, when you, you know, reach that. But it's the best, the most power direct way to do that is by, you know, using uh, deep, slow breathing and posture awareness to uh, uh, gradually, you know, bring the mind to that uh, middle point or this case a one pointedness. The one pointedness is not being absorbed in one object necessarily. It's the one point is the present moment uh, that's resting in the present uh, moment. And then from there you begin developing insight without getting too comfortable in that pleasant uh, present moment or, or that pleasant sensation, you know, the PT or the sukha that might come up when your mind is becoming more centered and calm, then uh, you have to avoid getting stuck in that. And that's when ideally you start opening up and paying attention to, uh, you know, the, the whatever is predominantly uh, taking your attention or the five aggregates and uh, being able to, uh, you know, identify the aggregates, form, feeling, perception, volition, consciousness, so you don't, you don't get uh, lost into them. If you don't recognize them for what they are, it's too easy to get carried away, oh, that pain in my knee, or, or start, you know, worrying about, you know, your self-consciousness, uh, or any of the other aggregates, you know, hung up on a perception. So you have to notice that, ah, this is perception, this is feeling, and kind of, you know, detach from that and then tuning in to the flow of impermanence. So basically that's just a brief review on the, on the process of the meditation. Uh, let's see if there's, uh, maybe there's some questions so far on this. We're going to go to the chats here. Uh, this person says, I'm working on Samatha. I'm at the stage where I get very drowsy. I know a lot of antidotes, but it's still frustrating. Do you have any encouragement or hints? Well, when you're drowsy is not the time to practice samatha. Samatha will make you more drowsy. Uh, and this is uh, an aspect of balancing the spiritual faculties and the factors of enlightenment. So when you're feeling drowsy is the time to reflect on the Dhamma. Remember some Dhamma verses that you remembered, or just think about the five aggregates. Think about Paticca Samuppada. Think about the Four Noble Truths. Think about the Eightfold Path. There's so many wonderful Dhamma topics that uh, we can recite to ourselves, and that will help to uh, get out of that drowsy uh, situation. That will activate the mind. So when the mind is too drowsy, it's not the time to practice uh, Samatha. But when the mind is too active, when you have too many thoughts and scattered, and then to come back and work on just the samatha, like counting the breaths uh, from one to 10 over and over until you're able to uh, become more concentrated and calm. And that's the way we have to balance those, uh, that's balancing the, the the concentration and the mindfulness. So the mindfulness is basically the alert state of attention and the uh, concentration is the more uh, calm uh, state of attention. So again, we have to find that balance. If either one goes off, then that uh, 
throws off our meditation or make, makes it more uh, difficult. Um, so that would be my <laughs> advice to uh, uh, when you're getting drowsy or uh, if that doesn't work, stand up, do a few uh, stretches, uh, you know, like we, we do at the beginning of meditation. That's why I lead people in a few exercises. We're going to do a few more because these are one of the better ways to get the energy uh, in the body moving and uh, to get a more uh, dynamic uh, connection through that, those life force vibrations in, in, inside the body. If you can feel those, you, you can't go to sleep doing that. You know, it, it, it's a very alive and it keeps the mind awake. Uh, okay, uh, this next question. <laughs> Can you please take us through the empty house again? In discussion and during meditation. Ah, the empty house, yes. <laughs> well, the empty house is a, is a, you know, analogy to this body with its six senses, the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, skin, and the mind. They're like the doors and windows of a house. Now, we, the ordinary person thinks that they're living within this body and mind, and they're the owner of this house. They're the owner of seeing, hearing, see, tasting, smelling, touching, and thinking. But the empty house means you're contemplating no self, that there's nobody at home. It's empty of an owner or a listener. There is listening. There is hearing, seeing, tasting, smelling, touching, and thinking, but the sense of I that's doing it has got to fade away. So you have to disidentify. That's why the whole process of Vipassana meditation is about disidentifying with this body, with the sixfold sense sphere, with the five aggregates, and even with our consciousness. The most re re repeated phrase of the Buddha was contemplating this, these five aggregates as this is not me, this is not mine, this is not myself. And you have to do it over and over, hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of times over and over again. Because for hundreds and thousands of lifetimes, we've been thinking, this is mine. This is my body, this is my feeling, this is my perception. So it's so ingrained, it takes a very strong and repeated medicine to overcome that. So, uh, you know, that's how you have to, uh, you know, contemplate that this, the empty house is, or just that the house itself is this body with the six senses. And being empty means there's no I that's trying to grasp those things. It's not like there's nothing there. It's just that there's no owner or controller of it. There's no entity that you identify as me. But there is awareness, of course. But that, that is the key to meditation. Once you've understood the difference between consciousness and pure awareness, then you, you're halfway home when you have that direct experience. And this is the Buddha's the, the, the direct method. Again, the four foundations of mindfulness. This is the direct way to penetrating that. You know, everything else, practicing metta, chanting, suttas, and so many other kinds of metta, these are going around, you know, going around the bush, but the, vip the Vipassana meditation attacks it directly. Uh, oh. uh, well, this, this question, uh, give an example of how consciousness aggregate distracts during meditation. It's the eye that's distracting you. The I don't like this. I want that. I don't believe this. You know, it's the, the eye that's reacting to sounds, anything you hear, see, smell, taste, 
touch, or even think about. It's the I that's identifying and reacting to that. That's how the consciousness disturbs you. It's the I in the consciousness that distur disturbs you, not the consciousness itself. It's the I in the consciousness and the ignorance in the consciousness. And that's, you know, again, I've repeated this so many times, you know, that the whole of the meditation practice is learning how to direct the focus to that. But to do that, you have to initially gain that calmer, centered state where the hindrances aren't uh, so active, so that you can effectively then contemplate these things without, you know, drowsing out or without, oh, little itch on my face or, you know, <laughs> you've got to overcome those hindrances first and the mind gets ready to uh, focus. Uh, okay, let me see the other here. I find sitting meditation easier in the morning and walking meditation easier in the evening after a full day of work. I find walking meditation very helpful concentrate the mind. Is it important to do meditation twice a day? Uh, the more you do it, the more it becomes easier to do. Let's put it that way. You know, so I, said, I would say twice a day is a minimum. Uh, and, you know, if you want to do one session in walking, one session in sitting, that's, that's okay too. In the beginning, people have to to, to manage with, you know, where they're at, right? And uh, so, uh, but the M&Ms in between, that's very important. Especially if you can do those M&Ms, those every hour at least to stop and pause for just for one minute and bring your attention back to the present moment and crystallize all your Dhamma knowledge in that one form. Come to that empty house. You know, you should get to a point where at any time, whether you're sitting or standing or, uh, you know, you'll be able to just, you know, come to the present moment and experience that empty house uh, feeling, uh, you know, and to, to be able to practice that over and over. So the more you do it, uh, you know, that is what's going to you know, give you the, the best results. I mean, the, the more quicker progress. Uh, so, you know, the, the min, uh, two hours or two sessions of meditation, whether it's 45, 30 minutes, 45 minutes or an hour, yes, is uh, optimal. But doing the M&Ms in between. I say if a person could really do that, uh, you know, you should... Uh, you, you, will, you will notice an improvement in your, especially in the mindfulness and the alertness of the mind, being able to notice when something is coming into your mind or some distraction before you, you know, you've overly reacted to it. So, yeah, if, if the mind is drowsy also or too many thoughts, then walking meditation might be more effective than sitting meditation. So you could do walking meditation first, you know, for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then, and then sit down and then see, uh, you know, if that helps you to, you know, quickly get into uh, a good concentration while uh, sitting also. But when you, after a full day work, when you come home, you know, I'd say, you know, uh, Freshen up a bit and do a few stretches first and then either do walking uh, for some time and then some sitting and then finish with metta. That would be my advice, you know, uh, and forgiving anybody. That's why I also wanted to mention, you know, especially during the daytime, if you got into an argument with somebody or you, you uh, let your mind get into some negative thoughts, you know, kind of just so you, you don't hold on to that, you know, and you sit down, take a few breaths and just say, okay, you know, I unmindfully did these things, had these kind of negative thoughts. Let me 
you know, try to generate more positive thoughts toward that particular situation or person and so on. Or if somebody did something you got upset about, forgive them so that you don't carry this into the meditation. Yeah, especially to do it before you meditate. But uh, if it's something that you really remember. And then after, afterwards too. Uh, as my age progresses, my body is becoming stiffer and more painful to sit longer. When I do yoga stretches for a few days regularly, it gets better. I add 15, 20 minutes and uh, all together. Uh, not sure what to uh, please suggest some tips to make it more affordable for householders who are burdened by unending list to do uh, I would say you know as I mentioned before uh Really, uh, 15 or 20 minutes of some effective postures, like even the ones that I do all the time, repeating, they're very simple, but they're effective, especially if you do it with the breathing and you learn how to uh, coordinate you know, those movements with the breath you know, more precisely and even longer. Uh, you, know, you, you don't need uh, to do you know, even 30 minutes or an hour of uh, of the yoga, you know, to keep the body in a, a, a good uh, medium state of flexibility, especially the spinal column, you know, flexing the spine, you know, forwards and backwards, then sideways like this, and then also vertically, like, uh, you know, the, the twisting. So you do, you do those three kind of, uh, uh, things and there's some some for your knees to to keep the knees, the joints of the knees and then circulation there, uh, and so on. Uh, you know, because except when I'm teaching courses, you know, I, I might just do a, some day, days, just ten or fifteen minutes, be, because my body's in a near maximum state of flexibility, so I don't have to do keep doing it all the time. I'm 72 years old. I've been keeping at it. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't take a lot, a lot to keep it up, even as you're getting older. Of course, <laughs> at some point, <laughs> you won't be able to, you know, I might not be able to do it, but uh, so, but yeah, before doing the yoga, you should try to evacuate your bowels and so on and not eat a lot. Don't eat much or nothing, uh, at least an hour before. And even two hours, if you eat a lot, you uh, shouldn't do the yoga before two hours. Uh, so try to do it in the morning before eating or uh, uh, before you eat dinner. Or, you know, if you eat early dinner, then you know, you're doing some later. But usually around uh, before, before the meal is best time because then you have better digestion. Uh, if you do uh, the yoga before breakfast and the yoga before you uh, eat, if you're eating around 6, 6.30 in the evening, uh, then it will help you digest the food better. So, you know, it's a, you know it's 15 or 20 minutes of the yoga and then the 45, 50 minutes of meditation, if that's all you can manage, you know, an hour, hour and 15 minutes. Uh, you know, but then, you know, you want to do it longer as you, as you, you know, improve. During meditation, when we are mindful of the five aggregates, especially the body, do we contemplate on the four elements or are there other contemplations to be aware of? Uh, well, the four elements are what the body aggregate is. 
but there are derivatives of the four elements. So the four elements are earth, fire, water, and air. But the derivative elements are color, smell, sound, taste, and so on. So these are the derivatives of the four elements. So those are also the material aggregate. If you hear a sound, that's the material aggregate. And it's also hearing and it's a consciousness. They're all together, but the sound itself is the material aggregate. The visible vibration, you're looking at this screen and you, you see this face. Or, you know, that visible vibration is the material aggregate, but the perception is you identifying, oh, that's Bantaro Ruler. That's a perception. And then the feeling comes with it, oh, I don't like him, or, or I, I do, or whatever. You know, that's the, the feeling, the painful or pleasant feeling that comes from the perception. And then thoughts about it, uh, you know, judgments or other types of thoughts, the volitional formations. And then the consciousness itself, uh, you know, the, the I. But the material aggregate, and also there's another way to contemplate the four elements. So yes, you, you keep, if, if you feel any sensation of the body, whether it's a saliva in your mouth, where it's the clothing touching your skin or any sensation, you know, it's the material aggregate. You don't have to, you know, go into too much detail with it. Or if you feel hot, let's say if you're sweaty, okay, that's the heat element, uh, the water element. And if you're sweating and uh, feel the saliva in your mouth or the, the air element, if you move or you feel the wind of the, from the fan in your room hitting you or, you know, the air element. Uh, uh, and then also the, the, the sounds, smell, taste, visible object. Uh, but you don't have to go into, you know, that much in, in detail. But uh, just know that th this is material form, the feeling that it produces and the perception that it produces in the mind and any volitional reaction or thought and uh, the consciousness. So by learning how to identify that, you, you create a detachment to it. See, the skill in meditation, you have to create a space, a buffer zone between the observing awareness and, those on, and the aggregates. Normally there's no space, the mind gets totally, because of its clinging, it gets, you know, grass onto that, but that being able to note, ah, this is form, this is feeling, this is perception. It creates, it kind of creates a, a little space. Like let's say if a strong guy goes and attacks some other person and, you know, but, and then some other guy comes and pulls the guy away, you know, pulls him off. So our, our mindfulness is what pulls our mind off of the aggregate. You know, he said, no, this is not me, not my, my, my myself. Oh, oh, yes. I thought it was. Oh, it's not. Oh, yes. And so you train yourself to just observe. That is, that is the beginning of the end. That's the, the light at the end of the tunnel. And you will notice that when you, you, you see that kind of detachment. But the, the skill is maintaining that for a long period of time. It might happen for one or two brief moments, but uh, you've got to train yourself to gradually over time, you'll be able to maintain that for longer. And that's when it, it really gets going good. And when the sense of I starts fading away more. Uh, okay, friends, I don't want to go on too much longer. Uh, we'll do this one more here. Uh, Sankara is a mental formation in the five aggregates, and Sankara, the karmic formation in the 12, 12 links are difficult for me to grasp, particularly to identify during meditation. Grateful for any insight. Well, to keep it simple, try to see them basically as the same. The, the five aggregates in, the medita in your daily moment to moment, Whenever you're reacting to something, let's say uh, this itch on my face and I go like that, okay, 
that's the volitional formation occurring in the five aggregates. But it's because it was the volitional formation in number two step of the Paticca Samuppada, uh, Vidya Pachya Sankara, that gives rise to the uh, the volitional formation in the aggregate. So basically, they're the same. It's that uh, like the the it's like the fetters and hindrance, right? So as we talked, you know, before I explained the ten fetters. It's because of the ten fetters that the hindrances arise. The ten fetters are always there in the unconscious, giving the rise to the uh, the hindrances that just come in go, but the fetters are always there. So that in the same way, the sankharas of the number two uh, link in the Paticca Samuppada are always there. And the aggregate, the sankharas in the five aggregates are what are, you know, arising and vanishing moment to moment and re refeeding and re-strengthening the sankharas in the number two. So really they're, 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 they're identical. They said that one is the source and the other is the, the, the manifestation uh, of it. So just understand, whenever you have a volitional formation in meditation, understand that you've just strengthened that to where it's going to happen again. Now, it could be a good one or a bad one. I mean, if it's like a negative thought and you entertain some negative thought about somebody, then that's going to strengthen the negativity of, you know, anger or other, uh, you know, thought about the uh, ill will but if it's loving kindness if if you practice metta then that's strengthening the positive mental formation of metta where that will also come up again and that's the whole that's the that's the whole deal you know that's it's like you know that's the whole practice of dhamma decreasing the mental states and increasing the positive states decreasing the 10 unwholesome actions and increasing the opposites of them, the wholesome actions using right understanding, right mindfulness, and uh, right effort, right effort. That's it. Uh, you know, that's, that's the internal practice of, of the meditation. All the other things are just uh, the conditioning factors, you know, developing some concentration and uh, so on, calmness and observing precepts and so many other things. Okay, so again, remember the outer and the inner, they're, they're, they're not disconnected. You can't go around in the outer world and expect the, the mind not to be affected by it, no. Uh, so, you know, that's that's part of the right understanding. Uh, okay, one more question. One has to make decisions, choices, and these have to be based on one's opinion. So we make these choices based on our understanding but don't have attachment to them. That's why the first step of the Eightfold Path is right understanding and right thought. Because if we don't have the right understanding, we're gonna have, we're not gonna be able to make the right thoughts and the right choices, you know? Because you're right, the choices depend on our understanding. Uh, and that understanding, you know, is based on whether it's mundane understanding or super mundane understanding, you know, understanding of the Dhamma or understanding in the conventional world. Uh, so that's why the, but in the end, yes, we shouldn't have attachment to any of our opinions ultimately, but attachment to our good opinions will at least help us to progress 
on the path. As I mentioned, I think last week in the story of the simile of the raft, right? We use the Dhamma like a raft to cross the ocean. So the Dhamma is the raft. That's an opinion, right? Right view, right? This, this is the way to live, right? Okay, that's an opinion of the Buddha, an opinion of the, of the Dhamma. Now, other people might have their own ideas of right view and what is the path. That's their opinion. And each person has to relate it to themselves to see is what you believe, what you understand, what are your opinions? Is it helping to, to make your mind less confused and more clear? Or is it making your mind more confused and muddled? <laughs> That's the progress of the Dhamma, you know? Is whatever you're doing, believing, thinking about, if it's leading to increase more defilements, then it's the wrong way. If it's leading to the increase in the wholesome, decrease of the unwholesome and increase of the wholesome, then you can consider that uh, a good practice. Okay, friends. So I think uh, uh, we may uh, stop this questions and answers uh, now. Uh, and if you, if I didn't get to you, uh, uh, then keep them uh, for for later, because uh, you know we want to have a, as I mentioned, we want to have a little bit longer session. And uh, yeah. okay, so anyway, those are very good questions, and so this is the way that I would like to uh, to do these Sunday programs. You know, f uh, from now on, maybe start with just a short. You know, uh, some some words and then uh, you know have you uh, answer the, the question because that's what the the Buddha said that, you know answering questions that's what leads to more intelligence and to lead to that when you die if you have your questions resolved overcome the doubts then that's how your mind is going to uh, be prepared for you know what comes after. Okay? Right. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a few minutes break uh, to uh, drink some water or use the restroom. And then we'll come back and uh, do a few exercises and then meditate. See you in a few minutes.
Okay, uh, <clears throat> friends, we'll go ahead and uh, begin some yoga stretches. And you might have noticed I, I had to take off my outer robe there so I'll be able to do a, a few more demonstrate a few more uh, yoga exercises that, other than the standard four that I've been you know showing over and over again uh, and try to add a few more uh, to that okay so let's try to stand straight relax your shoulders and arms feel your feet pressing the floor Try to mentally feel the height and weight of the body over the feet. Then begin some deep, slow breathing. Try to take again at least three or four seconds to draw the air from the lower lung up through the middle and feel that expansion in the upper chest. Hold the air in the lungs three or four seconds and feel that contraction of the out breath. In breath. Hold the air. Out breath. You might even be able to hear the sound of my breathing. If you can match that speed, it would be great. Okay, now we combine that breathing with the movements. <clears throat> so on the next in breath, raise the arms over the head. Interlock the fingers, turn the palms up, straighten the arms, stretch the head back, arch your lower spine. Stretch upwards at the same time. On the out breath, turn the palms down and touch the top of the head. The in breath. Stretch. Out. Third time, to hold that upward stretch longer. Release the fingers, the out breath, arms back to the sides. Relax. Keep the attention focused in the body. Feel those subtle pulsations, especially in your fingers and hands. There should be lots of increased sensation, being the activated life force. Sort of feel or imagine that combination of the deep breathing with the stretching charges up the blood with oxygen, gets it out to all the cells of the body. Just remember the present moment of standing, standing, standing. In the next in breath, push up on the toes, raise the arms up like this over the head. Face the palms toward each other about six inches apart, stretch. 
out breath, arms back to the side, heels down to the floor. Use the breath to help lift and lower the body like blowing up a helium balloon, the in breath. Out. In. Search. Out. Relax. Feel the feet pressing the floor, the hands at the sides, clothing touching the skin on different places, the head balanced on top. Feel those four. Elemental vibrations, release the earth vibrations, the more predominant one. Material aggregate. Producing sensations, perception. You can practice meditation at the same time as you're doing the yoga. <clears throat> okay, now the next exercise, we're gonna do knee bending. I don't know if you'll be able to see, uh, you do it all the way, but basically, uh, on an in-breath, you lift the arms up front, parallel to the floor, and lift up on your toes. So I raised up on my toes. On the out-breath, bend your knees and lower the body down, balancing on the balls of the feet. Try to find that balance in the balls of the feet. In the in-breath, come all the way up. Use the strength of the muscles in your legs. Up on the toes, again, out breath, back down. Some good exercise for the knees. If you don't have too much pain in the knee, in breath, up. Once more, out breath. In breath. In the out breath, lower the arms, heels. Feel the increased heart beating. Or other pulsations. Remember standing, standing, standing. Okay, now. <clears throat> Uh, spread your feet apart. I know you can't see it, but spread your uh, legs and feet apart at least three feet or one meter wider the better. And we're going to do twisting, the spinal exercise for lateral twisting of the spine. So hold the arms out to the side. <clears throat> we do this coordinated with the breathing also. 
So breathe in and look at your right hand and on the out breath, twist around to the right. Keep your eyes focused on the hand going backwards. On the in breath, come back to the front and let your feet turn with the body and then go to the other side, out breath to the left. In breath, the front. Just continue that two more times with the breathing, out breath to the right. In breath, front. Then to the left, out breath. In breath, front. One more time to each side. On the out breath, lower the arms, relax. Feel the sensations in your shoulders, keeping the arms held up like that. You know, good exercise for the shoulder muscles. Just feel each foot pressing the floor. Feel that earth element of the feet pressing the floor. <clears throat> now we're going to do side bending, keeping the feet apart still. <clears throat> bending from side to side. So let's just let the hands touch your uh, legs, side of your legs, thighs. And on an out breath, bend over the right side as far as you comfortably can. Let the right hand slide down below the knee. Try to bend straight over the side. Feel that stretch in the left side. In breath, lift up. And then out breath, the other side. In breath, up. Again to the right, out breath. In. Out. In. Once more to each side, out breath. In. Out. In and the out breath, just relax. Feel the whole body, each foot pressing the floor. The arms and hands hanging at the side. The clothing touching the skin, shoulders, chest, stomach.
feel the head balanced on the top of the neck. And now we're going to do forward and backward bending. Uh, again, keeping the legs apart. So I don't know if you'll be able to see me do that uh, completely, but <clears throat> be careful with the back bend. Don't uh, bend back too far the first time. Be careful when you come up from a back bend exercise. So breathe in. And on the out breath, bend forward. Let your hands slide down to the knees the first time. You keep the head up looking out at your computer screen. Try to flatten the spine, making the back flat like a tabletop so you can balance a full cup of tea without spilling legs are straight. In breath, lift back up. Then move the hands underneath your buttocks for support. Let the head go back. On the out breath, gently bend backwards. Not too far. First time. Look up at the ceiling. In breath, carefully lift up. Might feel some inner body shaking. And on the out breath, again, let the hands come down below the knees, but still keep the head up. Feel the stretch in the hamstring muscles in the back of the legs. In breath, come back up. Again, the back bend, out breath. Try to go a little bit further back. In breath, lift up. And the third time, out breath. Let the hands come down as far as you can toward the feet. Still keep the head up. Hold that a little longer. Feel the stretch in the back of the legs. The in-breath lift back up. Once more, the back bend. Carefully lift up. On the out breath, just relax, feel the whole body. Sort of mentally feel the outline of the whole standing body. Increased life force vibrations all over the body. Okay, then bring your legs back together. We'll do one last exercise, the head turning from right to left, as we've done before. On the in-breath, turn the head to the right as far as you comfortably can. You look over your right shoulder. Turn your eyes also to the right to focus as far as you can toward the back. On the in-breath, turn 180 degrees back to the left. 
Concentrate into the neck vertebrae, imagining them, feeling them loosening up. Turn the eyes to the left. In breath back to the right. Out breath left. In breath right. Out breath left. On the next in breath, let the head stop in the center. Just gently close the eyes, just mentally feel all the sensations of the inner body, the outer and inner body, clothing touching the skin on the outer body, and the subtle pulsations, the inner body. Remember standing, standing, standing. After doing all those exercises and the concentration, the mind should be well centered and grounded there in the the middle of the body, in the present moment, those overwhelming PT sensations and subtle vibrations are like the PT of concentration. Because if you can feel those subtler inner sensations, that means you've already reached a deeper level of awareness equal to the jhana, access concentration. If you keep your attention there and feeling those sensations, it's a one-pointedness. Applied and sustained attention. Applied and sustained thought is standing, standing, standing. Okay, friends, so we'll go ahead and sit back down now for meditation, uh, sitting meditation, in fact, that was already meditation, standing meditation, movement meditation, it's all awareness, that's all. Don't you learn what awareness is? Any time, any place is meditation. If you have a bottle of water handy, take a little drink of water after doing yoga like that. It's good to take a couple of sips of water to rehydrate.
when you drink water, you should hold the water in the mouth for several seconds, run your, run your tongue through the water to absorb the prana out of the water and then mindfully swallow. Okay, so just get into your comfortable sitting position. Yeah, I'm going to turn off the, my video. Keep your attention focused in your own body. Just try to follow the, the guidance, gradual centering. And just try to sit, keeping the back and the head in a straight line. And just feel the weight of the contact of the buttocks and feet to the floor. I feel that solid contact of the buttocks to the seat, the earth element where the feet press the floor, so the earth vibration. Just think in terms of the earth vibration, earth element, not my body. And feel your hands and fingers touching together or where they touch your leg. It's also the earth vibration. And if you feel some warmth in your hands, that's the fire element, temperature vibration, material aggregate temperature. And try to feel the inward curve of the lower spine. And gently lift, the, imagine lifting the spinal column upwards. To imagine some space between the vertebrae where the blood and electrical energy can freely circulate to optimize alertness to optimize the nervous system and feel the head balanced on top of the neck. And just feel where your lips touch together, where the upper lip touches the lower lip, that contact earth element, softer touch sensation of the lips, if you recognize as lips that's a perception, the mind giving names and labels to vibrations, the perception process. And feel inside the mouth, or feel the tongue in the mouth where it touches your teeth or gums, or if there's saliva in the mouth, it's the fluid vibration, the water element.
you know, take some deep, slow breaths again, like you were doing in the yoga exercise. Try to feel or even hear the sound of the air moving through the nostrils. Holding the air in the lungs a couple seconds. And feeling the out breath, the sensations of the out breathing. That movement of the air is the air element, movement, vibration. Feel any sensations inside the nostril. So also cultivate the understanding this physical body lives on the oxygen brought into through the lungs, into the bloodstream, to the cells of the body. Just take a few more deep, slow breaths like that, cultivating this basic mindfulness. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. So we're going to count the breaths from one to ten to try to develop a more clear concentration, focus concentration. If you can, continue to take some longer in and out breaths, keeping the attention on the expanding and contracting sensations. So with the next long expanding in breath, mentally count one. Holding the air in a couple of seconds. And with the contracting out breath, also count to one. The next expanding in breath, two. Contracting out breath to in breath three. Out breath. Three in breath, four out breath, four. In breath five. 
out breath five. In breath six. Out breath six. In breath seven. Out breath seven. In breath nine, eight. Out breath eight. In breath nine, out breath nine, in breath ten. Out breath ten. Now discontinue the controlled breath. Let the next breath come in when it's ready. Might be a shorter breath. Just keep the attention focused there in the center of the body. Just notice where you're feeling the breath, either in the abdomen or the Rib cage or the upper chest. It's always changing with different sensations, not just one sensation, whole string of changing sensations. Feel the whole in breath, and the brief pause, and the whole out breath. In the brief pause, you can compare the difference between what is a long breath and what is a shorter breath. And just maintain this present moment mindfulness in in sitting out out sitting the reason why we repeat in in twice because it's not just one in breath it's a couple of different expanding sensations, each of their own beginning and an end. In the brief pause, you feel the sitting posture, the buttocks pressing the seat. is cultivating that continuous connection to the present moment. This breathing body in, in sitting, out, out sitting. You can notice both the earth element vibrations and the 
air element vibrations at the same time expanding sensations of clothing and rib cage expanding with the earth vibration the air causing the expansion is the air element And the desire to live is the mind element that keeps the body breathing. Try to notice how each breath is different, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, sometimes you feel it more in the abdomen, other times you feel it in the rib cage or chest. It's always changing. mindfulness of breathing. Breath by breath, moment by moment, here and now. At the same time, be alert for any hindrances arising, any sleepiness or drowsiness. Restlessness. Wondering what time it is. Desires or aversions in the mental activities, the sankaras. Of the five aggregates. Cultivating that applied and sustained attention. Sitting and breathing, sitting and breathing. Especially on the out breath, feel the body and mind relaxing more and more with each out breath. Breathing in, tranquilizing the body and mind. <clears throat> One trains oneself. Breathing out, tranquilizing the body and mind. One trains oneself.
stay alert, awake, grounded, centered, the breathing body. From time to time, take a few deep, slow breaths to help stay awake and centered in the body. mind is calm enough and be able to identify the aggregates. This is material form. This is feeling. This is perception. That is the mental volition, activity. That's the ego consciousness. All the thoughts or ideas that are moving through the mind, all part of the sankara, aggregate of sankara, accumulated program from the past, manifesting in the present. And if you feed them, then they will come again in the future and try to relate them to the past, present, and the future. If you have a lot of wandering thoughts anyway, then you can just contemplate the Dhamma, contemplate the Dhamma Nupasana, 
aggregates, being able to identify the five aggregates. Uh, this is drowsiness, this is sense desire, this is ill will, this is restlessness. These are doubts. Identifying the five aggregates, this is form, this is feeling, perception, volition, consciousness. These are the six senses, eye, ear, nose, tongue, skin, mind consciousness. Whenever one of those predominates to be able to just know, identify it, this good state of mindfulness and wisdom together, They're all just constantly changing. One moment of sound, one moment body sensations, thoughts. It's cultivating momentary concentration, moment to moment, mindfulness and concentration to impermanent. Seeing how quickly those aggregates, sense vibrations arise and vanish and changing. And if you really have a good awareness, you can just reflect on the empty house. Just kind of feel this body and sense vibrations being an empty house. Body vibrations, sounds, thoughts coming and going without any body home. to react, to like or dislike. Just let that little sense of I is still there in the back of the mind. Just allow it to fade away. Breathing in, contemplating relinquishment. Breathing out, contemplating fading away. The fading away of eye consciousness.
Breathing in, sitting. Breathing out, sitting. Coming back to reground center. The breathing body. The mind gets lost. What thoughts arise when you hear that sound, the bell? Sambhi Sankara Anichati Sambhi Sankara Dukkati Sambhi Dhamma Anattati Yada Panyaya Pasati Atani Bindati Dukhi Esa Maggo Visudhiyam 
all conditioned things, the five aggregates of this body, mind, and world are impermanent. They're just constantly arising and passing away. And all these impermanent things, when clung to with ignorance, with I, me, and mind, bring suffering. And all the dhammas, the conditioned dhammas, as well as the unconditioned dhamma, liberation, is without any inherent owner or controller. It's not self. When one understands these three characteristics with the eye of wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with suffering and ignorance. This is the path to purity, to freedom. And thus spoke the Buddha. Now, friends, to finish the meditation as before, I want to send out meta vibrations to ourselves and all other beings. As I mentioned, we are going to include uh, sending out some meta vibrations to our dear friend and co host, Prashant, whose mother is. Uh, undergoing a terminal illness and just found that out. Anyway, so begin some deep, slow breathing again. And after breathing in, hold the air in the lungs for as long as you comfortably can to feel it settle in a healing energy and just imagine that as a metta going to your own bloodstream and cells of the body and on the out breath just feel that relaxation of the body and mind just continue taking several deep slow breaths just imagining that as the metta sending metta to your own body mind nervous system healing energy of oxygenated blood. Just with the thought, may I be well, peaceful, and wise. May I be free from greed, hatred, fear, and ignorance and all the pains and sufferings that come as a result of such unskillful thought, speech, and action. May I have the patience, strength, mindfulness, and wisdom to meet and overcome all difficulties in life. May I continue my study of the Dhamma and practice of meditation help free the mind from confusion and suffering. May I be well, peaceful, and wise. So again, continue to take some deep, slow breaths if you can. And we're gradually sending these thought vibrations, metta vibrations out with each out breath. Just imagine that it's the breath. Imagine those vibrations leaving your body and mind with the, with the out breath and those kind of pity sensations that you might be feeling. Just imagine it's radiating those outwards. We start by reflecting on the mother of Prashant, who you know, has a terminal illness and uh, came on quite unexpectedly and they're in a certain amount of, you know, pain and suffering on account of that. So, one of our Dharma brothers, 
living being. Just, just imagine these on each out breath, these thought vibrations of metta, just entering the body, mind, nervous system, Prashant and his mother and brother, and just wishing them to the best of their ability to bear this unfortunate situation maybe you can't be well and happy but at least be able to understand use the Dhamma practice and understanding to whether this crisis knows that everything is, comes and goes according to karma not to be afraid of the unknown you can't stop aging and death and then just keep sending these metta vibrations out also to any other people that you know that are suffering, maybe relatives, family members or others, or just people in general, just with each out breath, you send a, an out breath full of metta to individual persons or just at beings in large, just Extending these vibrations further and further afield across the oceans, your home countries, and eventually surrounding the whole earth, holding the whole earth and all the living beings. Gentle thought vibrations. May all living beings be well, peaceful, and wise. May all living beings be free from greed, hatred, fear, and ignorance. May all beings have the patience, strength, mindfulness, and wisdom to meet and overcome all difficulties in life. May all beings be able to have the opportunity to hear the Dhamma, to learn and practice meditation, to help free their mind from confusion and suffering. May all beings be able to live peacefully and harmoniously together understanding the ultimate interdependence, interconnection of all things. May all beings be well, peaceful, and wise. May all beings be well, peaceful, and why? Just like a mantra reverberating throughout space. Well, peaceful and why? For those who like to join in chanting the word sadhu three times slowly, you can do that. Again, just imagine those vibrations of sadhu going out into the world, all beings. So. So
finish with a smile on your face. So friends, Dennis and Bernie's our afternoon uh, sharing uh, to an end and uh, wish you all the best. We hope you can continue your meditation practice, increase your meditation practice little by little. Yeah. I hope everyone had a good meditation. Everybody yes. have a good meditation. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Bhante. Oh, you're, you're all very welcome. Mindfulness today keeps dukkha away. Don't forget the M&M. &M. Namo Buddhaya. Thank you, Bhante. Namo Buddhaya. Remember that? We carry the Buddha, that means the awareness, natural wisdom of the Buddha we all have with us as the present moment, mindful and whenever we touch base with that, we're touching base with the Buddha, the inner Buddha. Thank you, Bhante. Okay, friends, all the best. See Thank you again. You. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante, very much. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Klaus. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Actually, if, if people are still there, I forgot. I was going to answer a question here. Uh, if uh, Jason Heath is still out there, are there any particular yoga exercises you would recommend to help us sit better upon the cushion? Something that targets the lower body to complement your exercises that work the spine. Yes, if you go to my blog, go to the go to. Uh, Actually, my video channel on our website, if you go to the website, lionwisdom.org and click the video page, and then scroll down where it says Lion of Wisdom YouTube channel and or cl click that. No, actually, if you go to the, the Lion of Wisdom uh, YouTube channel, you will see there the first few, there's a couple of uh, videos that I made like over 10 years ago about sitting in the yoga posture, uh, postures for, for doing that, for, for uh, exercising, you know, the, the knees and legs. So look at that, uh, at my, uh, at the Lion of Wisdom video, uh, YouTube uh, videos, you should see that uh, the yoga posture, yoga for meditation posture. Uh, okay. Okay, anyway, if I wasn't able to answer all your other questions, uh, better remember them for uh, next week. Yes. Wow. Okay. Okay.